Darwin publishes The Origin of Species in 1859, Huxley takes up the cudgel as Darwin's bulldog propagating this idea um, of natural selection. Richard Owen is completely aghast by the whole thing, uh, and he begins to argue that this is nonsense, it couldn't possibly be applied to humankind. Um, and Huxley and Owen have this great guerrilla war um, over whether or not mankind could be um, inseparably related um, to, to chimpanzees and to apes and to gorillas. But dinosaurs become incredibly important to this story because Darwin himself realizes and confesses in the first edition to the origin that there isn't very much fossil evidence for his theory. That's his great weakness. But what happens in the 1860s is that paleontologists around the world begin to discover more and more dinosaurs and other types of prehistoric creatures, which begin to suggest that there actually has been a history of evolution and the development of species over time. So many of these discoveries happen in Bavaria, in Germany. The first of them is a feather. Um, and I think many of your listeners will know about the Archaeopteryx, the feathered reptile um, that appears in so many illustrated books about dinosaurs. Um, the Archaeopteryx is followed quite closely by the Compsognathus. It's a small chicken-like dinosaur. Um, and then... In America, a paleontologist called Edward Drinker Cope begins to put all of these things together. Um, he realizes, um, or rather um, a, a, a fellow paleontologist in America has realized that how people had thought dinosaurs stood and moved over time was wrong. The discovery of the Hadrosaurus in New Jersey in 1859 begins to present a new picture. Um, so looking at the skeleton of the Hadrosaurus, scientists begin to realize that dinosaurs stood upright, that their legs didn't jut out to the side like many of present day um, living reptiles, and so that they stood something like birds. And so, again, we have a, a scientific community which is a beginning to correspond with each other across oceans, but by thanks to the telegraph and um, sort of steamships we were taking uh, scientific journals here, there and everywhere with much greater speed and regularity. And by the 1860s, Thomas Huxley is putting all of this evidence together. And what happens is that all of the dominoes su suddenly fall into place, the pieces of the puzzle. And he can point to the Compsognathus, to the Arctiopteryx, to, to other dinosaurs and to the living bird, and to realize that all of these creatures are created. They're, they're built in the same way. And for Huxley, it's dinosaurs and their relationship to birds and to present-day reptiles, which proves, perhaps in a way that's less volatile and less politically sensitive than by doing so with reference to humankind and to apes, that evolution is real.